Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's talk about international relations. Today's topic is the prisoner's dilemma. So we'll actually be stepping away from a really serious international relations framework to talk about a general model of conflict and cooperation. And then in the following videos, we'll relate this model back into the topic or back into the realm of international relations. So the main question we're interested in answering today is how can individually rational behavior lead to collectively bad outcomes? And we're gonna see this through the following situation. Suppose that two suspects are arrested. The police think that they are trying to rob a store, but they really only have the evidence to charge the suspects with trespassing. So the police, if they really want to charge the criminals with this attempted robbery, they're gonna need one of those criminals to rat out the other one. And to induce this behavior, the police officers are going to follow the suspects the following deal. They're gonna sequester each of the suspects into separate rooms and then say this little spiel to them. So if no one confesses to the robbery, the police will only be able to charge the prisoners for trespassing and the punishment for that is one month in jail. Now, if one confesses and the other one doesn't, the police will be lenient on the rat, but severely punish the quiet one. They'll throw the book at the quiet one. The punishment here is 12 months in jail for the one who kept quiet and zero months in jail for the confessor or the rat. If both confess, then the police can punish both of them evil, equally, and they have the evidence now to charge them with attempted robbery. And so instead of just getting one month in jail apiece, they'll get eight months in jail apiece. apiece. So the question is this, suppose that the thieves only want to minimize the number of months they spend in jail, should they confess to the police? And note that in that suppose the thieves only want to minimize the number of months they spend in jail. So we're assuming here that these, uh, these thieves aren't friends, they don't really want to work together, they don't have any sort of benefit from helping out the other guy, they're only interested in their own amount of jail time. I just want to emphasize that. All right. Now, you can take this slide of a whole bunch of information, and fortunately, game theory allows us to condense that into a much simpler packet of information, and, and it looks like this. So this is what we call the prisoner's dilemma. We have two players, player one and player two. They each have two options. They can either confess or keep quiet, and depending upon what each of them do, you end up at different outcomes. So if both of the players keep quiet, then you end up at this outcome here, where each of them spends one month in jail, which we're representing with a negative one. If one confesses and one keeps quiet, then the confessor gets off really easily. He gets no time in jail, and the one who keeps quiet gets negative 12 or 12 months in jail. Same is true up here, but in reverse. And then finally, if both of them confess, then they both get eight months in jail. Now, I want to highlight the different types of outcomes that we have here. So we have a cooperative outcome where both of the players keep quiet, and they both get a pretty good outcome where they're only spending one month in jail. That's really good for both of them. You'll notice though that there's another outcome here where we have these conflictual outcomes where one of them is keeping quiet and the other one's getting uh, confessing and really screwing over the other guy. And the, the one who does the confessing does really well for himself. He gets no time in jail, which is better than if they had both kept quiet. And the one who's on the losing end of the spectrum really gets screwed over and spends an entire year or 12 months in jail. Those are conflictual outcomes. Now, there's also this last outcome, which is what we can think of as the bad outcome. And the reason for that is if both of them confess and they both spend eight months in jail, which is worse for both parties than this good outcome, this, uh, this cooperative outcome, where they both spend only one month in jail. So if they were to end up in this outcome, they would look back and reflect on this and say, wow, I wish we could have had this outcome. It would have been better for both of us. Both of us would agree that this outcome is better than this outcome. And yet, the neat result here is that the only reasonable outcome for this game is for both players to confess, even though the keep quiet, keep quiet outcome is mutually preferable. And the reason for that is that we had to look at individual incentives. They'll explain why you're only going to get the, the confess, confess outcome and not the keep quiet, keep quiet outcome. And to see this, let's look at the, the player's strategies individually. So suppose you put yourself into player one's shoes and you know that player two is going to keep quiet. What should you do as player one? Well, your options are this. You can keep quiet and spend one month in jail or you can spend no time in jail by confessing. So if you know that player two or your rival, your opponent is going to keep quiet, then you should confess. That's better for you because you have no time in jail versus this one month in jail. On the other hand, if player two were to confess and you knew that as a, ahead of time as player one, then you should still confess because you'll only spend eight months in jail if you do that. Whereas if you kept quiet in this situation, you get screwed over and you spend 12 months in jail. So to sum things up, for player one's optimal strategy, well, regardless of player two's choice, player one is better off confessing. And so player one should therefore know that he should confess. 
Now, of course, this is just a symmetric game. Both players are the same, except we've named one of them player one and one of them player two. So the same is going to hold for player two. And we can see this just by going through this pretty quickly now. If player two knows that player one is going to keep quiet, then she should confess because zero is better than negative one. She'll spend no time in jail if she confesses. And one month in jail, she keeps quiet. So she should confess in the situation. And if player two were to confess and player two were to, player one were to confess and player two were to know that ahead of time, then she should still want to confess because eight months in jail is better than 12 months in jail. So she's going to confess regardless. And so you end up in this outcome right here. Well, we started out with four outcomes. And yet, despite all of that information and despite all of the possibilities, we know that only one thing really should be happening here. And that's that both players should confess. And again, that's even though if we look back we see this other outcome, this keep quiet, keep quiet outcome, where they both only spend one month in jail apiece. Now, what would be really great for these players is if, is if they could somehow sign a contract that would forbid them from playing Confess. Otherwise, they might get punished in some way afterward. But unfortunately, when you're in this sort of situation and you don't have the ability to bind contracts, then you're stuck in these bad outcomes right here. And this sort of gets back to the idea of anarchy, of course, where the world is the lawless land. And so as we start applying this to the international realm, you'll notice that although there is this better outcome here, you can't get to that in international relations very easily because you can not sign a contract that will force you to do this. And you'll get stuck in these bad outcomes. And we're going to see that in the next couple of videos where we'll apply this to the outbreak of World War One and some arms races and also to, to some tariffs. So I hope you join me then and I will see you next time. Bye.